up to this point, we've been talking about working with user and computer accounts as an individual accounts. But we may want to manage a group of users, and that's where we can use groups and or we can use organizational units. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to create and manage Active Directory groups and OUs. Specifically in this sub lesson, I'm going to provide you an understanding of the different types of groups that we have available to us in Active Directory, as well as the scopes and the conversion possibility of those groups. And the first thing I want to do is talk about three different types or scopes of groups that we have. We have a domain local group where we can actually grant the rights or permissions or access to the resources in that local domain. And they can contain users from any domain in the forest. They can contain global groups from any domain in the forest. And they can contain what are called universal groups from any domain in the forest. Now, what's a global group? A global group can be granted rights and permissions just as a domain local group to any resource in any domain. And these global groups contain users from anywhere in the forest as well as nested global groups from the same domain. Our universal groups are forest-wide groups to allow assignment of these permissions or access in any domain in the forest. And the members of these universal groups are stored in the global catalog. And they can contain any user account, global group, or any other universal group from any domain in the forest. So those are the three scopes of groups that we have. In addition, we have two types of groups. We have security groups. I can use these to assign the permissions or the access or the rights. And they can also be used for email distribution list. So if I want to have a group that's going to allow me to assign permissions and I want to be able to generate an email distribution list so I can blast an email to all the users within that group, security is the type of group you're going to want to create. We have a distribution group. We can't assign permissions to a distribution group. We can only use this for email distribution. It's very important for you to understand these concepts before we move on because as we move on in this sub lesson and this lesson, we're going to need to understand the group scope and type. Well, what if I create a group type or a scope and I realize, ooh, it's the wrong kind? Well, we have some options where we can convert. First off, a universal group can be converted to a domain local. It can also be converted to a global as long as that universal group doesn't contain another universal group. I can't nest universal groups inside of a global. I can convert a global to a universal group if not a member of another global group. Remember I talked about being able to nest globals? If I have a single global group non-nested, I can convert that to universal. A domain local to universal only if the group doesn't contain another domain local group. Again, that's another nesting situation. So one of the main reasons you can't convert groups is going to be because of nesting. Types of groups, distribution to security, we can always do that. I can take any distribution group and convert that to a security group. But the flip side of that, I can take a security group to a distribution group, but I'm going to lose all my permissions because remember, distribution groups don't allow permissions to be assigned to them. So you can convert both ways, but be very careful about converting from security to distribution because distribution doesn't host permissions. Therefore, you'll lose those permissions. Now, the great news is you don't have to create a bunch of new groups, get your Active Directory configuration all set up. There are several Active Directory directory service groups already available to you as soon as you install ADDS. The first is server operators, which is a domain local group created with the ability to install and share software on the server, manage your drives, and even back up the server. Account operators, they can create and manage user and group accounts, and they can also delete any accounts that they initially created. Print operators can install, share, and manage printers as well as print queues. If you want individuals just to perform backups of your servers, you have the backup operators group and that will give them the permission to back up that server. They also can perform a restore of that same data that they backed up. And there's a default group called network configuration operators, which have specific network management privileges. And then we have the administrators. The administrators domain local group has the right to perform any function on that server computer. So they have full party rights. They're not limited to what tasks they can perform as some of the previous groups that we talked about. Some additional ADDS groups include the users group. This domain local group inherits permissions to use resources. A guest group is a domain local group with limited access to the server. These can't have profiles or home directories. They're simply logging in as a guest, so no one knows who they are, so they don't have a home directory or a profile. Individuals signing in remotely to a server are part of the remote desktop users group. We have a domain computers group that contains all of the workstations and servers in the domain. 
as well as the domain controllers group that contains all your DCs in the domain. We have domain guest, which is a global group automatically added to all local guest groups, as we mentioned just above. We also have a domain admins group, which is automatically added to your local administrators group that we introduced in the previous slide. We have the domain users group, which is a global group that's automatically added to the local users group, which is at the top of the screen here. And lastly, the big dog on the porch is the enterprise admins. This is a universal group which is available only in the forest root domain. This has full party rights to do anything to any object throughout the entire forest. So be aware of these group and group types and the nesting capabilities that are created for you when you install ADDS. In addition to the groups that we talked about that allow individuals who are part of those groups to perform specific tasks, we also have what are called special identities groups. The everyone group, is just what it says. It includes everyone, including the users with accounts and including those guests without an account, as long as the guest account has been enabled. So this is a very powerful if you want to provide certain behavior for absolutely everyone that logs in, regardless of whether or not they have an account. Authenticated users, now these are only the individuals who have actually provided credentials to log in. So this does not include your guest account. We have the anonymous logon, this is used by resources that don't require credentials in order to permit access to that resource, not including the guest account. Interactive is used to log on to a local computer. Network is used to gain access to a remote computer. And then there's creator owner. That's any individual that creates any object. If I go in and I create a file, I automatically become the creator owner of that file. And this provides full control of that object. And I mentioned earlier how we can nest groups and I want to slow down here and make sure that we understand what we can do with this group nesting. And when it comes to AD group nesting, we're going to use an acronym called IGDLA. I is for identities. G is for global, for your global groups. DL is for your domain local groups. And then we have A, which is for access. If I have a larger multi-domain forest, I'm going to introduce another letter into this, and this is called the IGU for universal DLA. Same process up to the universal group, but your universal group now consolidates multiple global groups from other domains. Otherwise, the rest is the same. So you'll see universal groups if you have larger multi-domain forest, but it's not necessarily a requirement. And I believe in the saying where pictures speak a thousand words, here we have the breakdown. We have the I for identities, that's our computer and our user accounts. We have a global group. Notice it's a security group with a badge in the middle. We have a domain local group also containing a security badge. So the global group is going to go into that domain local group. And then we're going to assign access or permissions to that domain local group. So this is the process that we've talked about. Now remember, we can also nest global groups inside other global groups, universal inside of other universal groups, and domain locals inside of other domain local groups. But this is the process that defines the IGDLA. Now if we want to add the universal groups, they pop in after the global group, and this is where we can have multiple global groups across multiple domains inside of a universal group. We're going to pop that universal group now into that domain local group and then sign access or permissions to that domain local group. So this is a pictorial of the IGDLA as well as the IGUDLA. And now I want to step out to ADUC and explore these groups that we've just introduced. So we've jumped back into our main domain controller here and we're going to go to tools inside of server manager and we're going to go to active directory users and computers and you're going to see inside of here we have the users container and we have the built-in container it comes up in the users container by default so let's go ahead and take a look at the administrator account here we talked about several different groups here's the domain admins group the domain computers domain controllers domain guest and domain users. We just talked about all of them. The big dog on the porch, enterprise admins. Let me double click on that one and let me go to the members tab and you'll see the local administrator is part of this enterprise admins. Let me go back to our domain admins, members. Also the local administrator is part of that. Now we can look at this in two different ways. Let me go to the administrator account 
and we'll go to member of, you'll see the administrator, the local administrator for this computer is part of the administrator's local group, the domain admins group, the domain users group, the enterprise admins group, group policy creator group, and the schema admins group. So this guy has lots and lots of permissions and is part of a lot of very powerful groups. So we have to be very careful about this administrator. I'm going to go ahead and cancel on this. Let's go to the built-in option here. And you're going to see we have the local administrators group here, members. Notice the local administrators group has the administrator, Brian Alderman, also is an administrator account, domain admins and enterprise admins. So the administrators group has access to the forest and domain wide groups as well. A couple other ones down here. Let's go down here to the print operators. You'll see that one here. The remote desktop operators we talked about. The server operators that we talked about. And we talked about the users group. And you can tell if it's a group versus account because there's two heads in here. Notice this guy right here. The account operator's got a green head and a blue head. Let me go back to users. And you'll notice the administrator here just has a blue head or blue shirt on or whatever it may be. So that's one way you can differentiate between a user and a group. The other way is just going to the type. We have user, we have security group. If we scroll all the way down, that's all we have here. Back to built-in, all security groups over under built-in. So those are the two areas you're going to want to focus on when you come in and take a look at where your groups reside. Let me go back to one more I wanted to show you. Where was that, dude? It was under users, domain controllers. And I'm going to put members. You're going to see my AZMTP1 and my AZMTP2. Both of my DCs in this domain are part of this domain controllers group. And the other one we have is domain computers. And you can also see Brian Surface is part of the domain. So this is where you can go in and take a peek at the default groups and the members of those groups.